I want you to hit me as hard as you can. This man is very good at playing villains. A little too good, actually. Serial killers, gangsters, creepy dads, supervillains, and even an evil grasshopper. I think pretty recently we all started learning why Kevin Spacey's performances had the power to take us to disturbing places. I was a huge Kevin Spacey fan. His delivery of every line was truly masterful. Every syllable spoken to perfection. Every character 100% believable. My wife, on the other hand, always hated Kevin Spacey. He creeps me out, she would say. That's just because he's such a good actor, I would respond. But I was wrong. Well, I mean, I was right about him being a good actor, but my wife could see something in his eyes. That maybe there's something more to this man, allegedly, than just his cinematic skills. And, uh, she was right. Allegedly. For quite a while, Kevin Spacey was flying high with his two Oscars on that Lolita Express, partying it up with his other controversial pals. You know, the usual suspects. Allegedly. So let's see how this divisive figure fell from grace, and if a comeback of any kind is at all possible. Today we delve into what the f happened to Kevin Spacey. The fuck is this? I'd like to speak to my lawyer, please. Before we begin, I just want to say thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe, and click that bell to get those notifications if you like this kind of stuff. Now back to the show. Help! I've escaped from Kevin Spacey's basement! Help me! But to truly understand what the f happened to Kevin Spacey, we must begin at the beginning, and the beginning began when he was born on his birthday. 1959, New Jersey, but he was raised in California, and apparently had an abusive childhood. Maybe that has something to do with something. Young Kevin Spacey would make a name for himself on the stages of Broadway, which led to the Tonys showering him with many much-deserved awards. He made the transition from the Broadway stage to the Hollywood silver screen by popping up in some small roles in films such as Heartburn in 1986, Working Girl in 1988, Rocket Gibraltar in 1988, See No Evil, Hear No Evil in 1989, a movie called Dad, and a TV movie called Fall From Grace, where he would play a televangelist who fell from grace. But it would be his performance in the 1992 big screen adaptation of David Mamet's Glengarry Glen Ross that would see him garner respect as he held his own against acting legends such as Al Pacino, Ed Harris, Alec Baldwin, and his mentor Jack Lemmon, with many people calling this one of the best casts ever assembled. And Kevin Spacey, he fit right in. I'm trying to run an office here. Now will you go to lunch? Go to lunch! Will you go to lunch? He started grabbing larger roles in films such as the Christmas classic The Ref in 1994, and a starring role in the dark comedy Swimming with Sharks. But it would be the next year, 1995, that would truly set Kevin Spacey apart from everyone else. First, he would appear in a movie that is kind of more relevant today than it ever has been, Outbreak. Following that up with one of the most sinister performances ever, playing John Doe in David Fincher's Seven, spelled with a seven. And even though he's only really seen in the final act, his horrifying presence is felt throughout the film. And this psychopath steals every single moment of screen time that he has. Kevin Spacey in Seven is truly the stuff of nightmares. You can see it in his eyes. People will barely be able to comprehend, but they won't be able to deny. Then he would end the year with his Academy Award winning performance for Best Supporting Actor in The Usual Suspects, a role that was written specifically for him. 
Kevin Spacey's mysterious performance holds this film together as it guides the audience through this fantastic puzzle of a movie. Kevin Spacey is the ultimate unreliable narrator, and this film is made by a very talented filmmaker, Brian Singer, who has something in common with Kevin Spacey, allegedly. Well, whoever Kaiser Sosa is, I can tell you he's going to get gloriously drunk tonight. <laughs> he would then appear in the excellent Joel Schumacher-directed courtroom drama A Time to Kill, followed by his own directorial debut in a film called Albino Alligator, which didn't exactly generate the best reviews. Critics called it a phony noir and pretentious, and it doesn't even have, like, a giant killer albino alligator, which I was misled to believe. Go fuck yourself! Hey! However, it was in front of the camera that Kevin Spacey was still one of the best. He would go on to make some very interesting films with some very talented filmmakers, appearing in the Academy Award-winning L.A. Confidential in 1997. And that same year, he would be directed by Clint Eastwood in the film Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. Kevin Spacey would have some intense chemistry with Samuel L. Jackson in the thriller The Negotiator in 1998, and appear alongside Sean Penn in an independent film called Hurley Burley, also starring in a film called The Big Kahuna in 1999, as well as lend his voice to the animated Pixar movie A Bug's Life which is just the Seven Samurai with bugs. <laughs> then Kevin Spacey would put another Oscar on his shelf this time for Best Actor, for his performance as Lester Burnham in Sam Mendez's film American Beauty. Director Sam Mendez said that he had to fight to cast Kevin Spacey, as studio executives wanted someone with a little more star power. They were pushing for people like Tom Hanks, Bruce Willis, Kevin Costner, John Travolta, and even Chevy Chase. But this filmmaker believed in Kevin Spacey. American Beauty would make $356 million worldwide. Of course, this film would win Best Actor at the Oscars, it would also win Best Picture, amongst others. It is a truly haunting performance that is at times hilarious. His character kind of became a strange symbol for suburban midlife crisis rebellion. American Beauty really captured the zeitgeist of the time, 1999, but in my opinion it hasn't really aged very well for uh, many reasons. Kevin Spacey was at the height of his powers and it seemed like he really enjoyed winning Oscars. So for the next few years, he did nothing but good-hearted but misguided Oscar bait, like playing a burn victim middle school teacher who inspires Haley Joel Osmond to change the world and pay it forward, playing a patient in a mental institution who may or may not be an alien in the film K-Pax, he was a reporter with a dark family secret in The Shipping News, an anti-death penalty activist who's on death row in The Life of David Gale, a famous writer whose son is Ryan Gosling and is accused of murder in the United States of Leland, and something called Edison. But I have to say that Kevin Spacey's most memorable performance during this time was appearing alongside Tom Cruise, Gwyneth Paltrow, Danny DeVito, and Steven Spielberg in the hilarious opening scene of Austin Powers in Goldmember, perfectly playing Hollywood's version of Dr. Evil, which totally fits with his history of playing other evil characters, and becoming a real-life evil villain in the future, allegedly. In 2004, Kevin Spacey would step back behind the camera to star and direct his Bobby Darren biopic passion project, Beyond the Sea. He gets to show off his musical chops, but many people felt like this was just an ill-conceived vanity project more desperate Oscar bait. Uh, that's all. In 2006, Kevin Spacey would score his biggest box office performance to date, playing the infamous Lex Luthor in the nearly $400 million grossing Superman Returns, reteaming with his usual suspects director, BFF Brian Singer. This is a boring, boring mess of a movie 
that even Kevin Spacey's evilness could not save. The film frickin' opens with Lex Luthor scamming an old lady, and it all goes downhill from there. It's a complete waste of money and talent. Rip tonight. Kevin Spacey would then play a meanie faced jerk to Santa in the film Fred Claus, because, you know, now nothing screams Christmas like Kevin Spacey. This was followed by the $160 million grossing, card counting, white washing heist film 21. And if you noticed a familiar voice while watching Sam Rockwell in Moon, that would be because Kevin Spacey would voice the robot companion really playing off those robotic, non-human vibes that Kevin Spacey gives off. It's really great casting, actually. He would follow that up with a couple of stankers, like Shrink. Critics called it cliched, but felt that Kevin Spacey's performance at least made it watchable. And a film called Father of Invention, which got a rare 0% on that website where those tomatoes get rotten. But can you really trust tomatoes? The next phase of Kevin Spacey's career can be called the inspired by true events stage, as he would be seen in the HBO film Recount, about one of those presidential election debacles. He was in the film The Men Who Stare at Goats, about government mind control programs. He played a corrupt Washington lobbyist in Casino Jack, and he appeared in the Oscar-nominated financial crisis film Margin Call as well as getting to play everybody's favorite president, Richard Nixon, in the film Elvis and Nixon. Next, just like how he played a horrible boss in the film Swimming with Sharks, he would play a horrible boss in the film Horrible Bosses. This comedy would be a massive success, pulling in 210 million, and it was successful enough to get an unsuccessful sequel called Horrible Bosses 2. He's a total fucking asshole. In 2013, Kevin Spacey, alongside Robin Wright and David Fincher, would launch a new era of television by being the first TV series ever produced by Netflix, with the US adaptation of House of Cards. Kevin Spacey would play a man who lacks any sense of morality and has only one true ambition, power. You know, a politician. House of Cards would go on to be nominated for a slew of awards, including 56 Emmys and 11 Screen Actor Guild Awards, including two wins for Spacey. And you have to admit, he created one of the most iconic television characters in recent memory. There is no right or wrong. Not anymore. There's only being in, and then being out. His talented voice would be featured in the video game Call of Duty, Advanced Warfare, and in a career full circle, he did an absolutely amazing job hosting the Tonys in 2017. This is the 71st Annual Tony Awards. I'm Kevin Spacey. Your host is found. But here is where our story takes a bit of a turn. While enjoying massive success with House of Cards on Netflix, as well as appearing in big screen films like Baby Driver and the $60 million grossing Nine Lives, where Kevin Spacey plays his greatest role yet, Mr. Fuzzy Pants. Seriously? Those roles right there in Baby Driver and that talking cat, they would represent the end of an era. One of the last times Kevin Spacey's face would appear on a movie screen without a dark, horrible cloud around it due to sexual misconduct allegations. Inspired by the hashtag MeToo movement, actor Anthony Rapp went public with an alleged experience in 1986 when Rapp was just 14 and Kevin Spacey was 26, where Kevin Spacey allegedly made drunken sexual advances towards the teenager, the child. Soon after, similar allegations began to emerge from dozens of other young men. Kevin Spacey would try unsuccessfully to steer the conversation by releasing a statement where he apologized for, in his words, what would have been deeply inappropriate drunken behavior, and then came out as a gay man. And I think it was Wanda Sykes who said it best, accusing him of hiding behind the rainbow or something. 
There's no coming back from this. At the time all of this happened, he had already filmed his role as J. Paul Getty in Ridley Scott's All the Money in the World, which, in an unprecedented move, would see Christopher Plummer refilm Kevin Spacey's scenes. And Christopher Plummer would go on to be nominated for an Academy Award for his performance, something that people had predicted for Spacey prior to the allegations. In another costly move, House of Cards killed off Kevin Spacey's character and distanced him from the show. While producers of a movie that was already shot, called Billionaire Boys Club, opted to release it with Kevin Spacey several months later, saying that they wanted to honor the hundreds of other people who worked on the film. Yeah, Kevin Spacey wasn't the only person making this, but this is a decision that they may have regretted when the film barely made $600 its opening weekend. And surprisingly, those critics, they would have to admit that Kevin Spacey actually delivers a pretty good performance, and he's very good at playing the bad guy. And by this time, Kevin Spacey's agent and publicist had cut ties with him, and several upcoming projects that he was attached to, like a Gore Vidal biopic, was completely scrapped. Kevin Spacey would fade away into the shadows for a while, until Christmas Eve 2018, when a random video was uploaded to his YouTube channel, where Kevin Spacey, as his House of Cards character, Frank Underwood, would address the controversy and deny the allegations in a roundabout way, subtly implying that he is part of a vast conspiracy and that there's more to it than this. But once again, this attempt to clear his name was mostly just considered creepy and bizarre. This strange little video has 13 million views on YouTube. Then the next year, starting a Christmas Eve tradition, Kevin Spacey would release a sequel to this video titled KTWK, which stands for Kill Them With Kindness. And on Christmas Eve 2020, a third video titled 1-800-Xmas would see Kevin Spacey break character and address his viewers as himself, offering words of encouragement to anyone going through hard times. There was no Christmas Eve video in 2021. Perhaps the absence was due to the fact that Kevin Spacey's career wasn't quite as over as you may have thought. He currently has two films in the pipeline, The Man Who Drew God and Peter 5-8. Despite the numerous allegations, Kevin Spacey has never been found guilty in a court of law of any wrongdoing. However, he was ordered to pay $31 million to the producers of House of Cards for violating their sexual harassment policy, as well as a pending civil suit filed by the original accuser, Anthony Rapp. But the trials and investigations of the other allegations were a bit of a mess, with a witness pleading the fifth and evidence mysteriously disappearing. And maybe Kevin Spacey hasn't exactly been found guilty yet because his accusers keep mysteriously dying. One died only days after his Kill Them With Kindness video. So I hate to say this, but maybe there's something bigger, something more sinister going on here. Cause you know, there always is, isn't there? What the f do you think's going on here? So the real question is not what the f happened to Kevin Spacey. We all know. The question is, should we be asking if it's truly possible to distinguish the art from the person, whether or not they have been officially found guilty in a court of law? Are the allegations strong enough to really ruin him? And are you able to appreciate a performance by a person who has allegedly done horrible, hideous, disgusting things in their personal life? Allegedly, allegedly. And when it comes to Kevin Spacey, I don't really see myself ever really rushing down to the nearest theater to catch his next movie, or even clicking on whatever new thing he has on streaming anytime soon. I don't think I ever need to see American Beauty again, but I will continue to watch Seven. And you know what? I have watched Seven since the allegations. And Seven is still a great film, and Kevin Spacey's performance is actually even more haunting now. What the f***?
you know? And a film is not made by just one man, one person. A film is a collaborative effort, and we cannot let the actions of one man ruin the hard work of the rest of the cast and crew. There's so much more to appreciate in the movie The Usual Suspects, other than Kevin Spacey and f***ing Brian Singer. And the people who brought us LA Confidential don't deserve to suffer for Kevin Spacey's alleged sins. Just do what I do. Every time Kevin Spacey is on the screen, just pretend it's Christopher Plummer. Because many of his films are true examples of tremendous filmmaking and acting. And these films and these performances should be studied by anyone looking to strengthen their craft and understand the art of cinema. So yeah, it's totally understandable to give a f about what the f happened to Kevin Spacey. Because what happened to him is a big f***ing deal. How do we as a society handle this? How do we judge him? Should we judge him? I mean, innocent before proven guilty, right? So yeah, what the f***? And what I've done is gonna be puzzled over and studied and followed forever. Yeah. And like that,